this video, we're going to go over what carbon registries and carbon standards are in the carbon markets. Starting off, what is a carbon registry? A carbon registry is a centralized system or organization that tracks the creation and usage of carbon units. Carbon registries can be found in both the compliance and voluntary carbon markets. This video is going to be focused on the registries found in voluntary carbon markets because those are more complex. A registry in the compliance carbon markets just tracks carbon allowances that the system itself has created. So that's a relatively straightforward process. You can think of the union registry in the European Union Emissions Trading System as an example. They create their own allowances and disperse those to market participants in the EU. On the other hand, in voluntary carbon markets, carbon registries are especially important because they not only track existing carbon credits to see whether they've been used or not, but they also create the guidelines for individual carbon projects that produce them. That's where things get more exciting. Carbon registries in the VCMs each maintain their own carbon standard, which are the rules for each methodology or type of carbon project that a project must follow to be able to generate carbon credits. Vera has the verified carbon standard, gold standard has, uh, well, the gold standard, and so on. Uh, each registry has their own rules in place for what a forestry project or a direct air capture facility has to do to create carbon credits under their specifications. Specifications that have been crafted by not only these registries, but also other independent standards bodies. For example, the International Carbon Reduction and Offset Alliance, or IRCOA, is a non-profit organization aimed at promoting oversight in the industry. They have a list of approved registries, including the Large Four, among others. Speaking of the Large Four, let's go over the market share of the carbon registries. As of November 2023, Vera was around 64% of the market. Gold Standard was around 15%, American Carbon Registry is 5% of the market, and Climate Action Reserve came in at 4%. Those are the four largest registries in the voluntary carbon markets. Now the 12% of the market under the ARB is registered under the California Air and Resources Board. This is a regulatory authority in the California Cap and Trade Scheme, which allows for a certain percentage of credits to be used to offset emissions instead of their own issued allowances. So those are carbon projects, but they're a part of the compliance markets, not the voluntary markets. With those market share numbers in mind, let's review what methodologies each registry tends to offer. If you'd like to see all the different methodologies and how they're broken down into these categories, I would recommend watching my video on the supply and demand of carbon credits, where I go over just that. With that said, here we can see the total number of projects registered by the big four registries. As of November 2023, there were 7,971 projects registered with these four registries. Column by column here, agriculture is dominated by Vera, with Vera making up 83% of those methodologies. Carbon capture is split between Vera and American Carbon Registry right now. Chemical processes are primarily offered by American Carbon Registry. Forestry and land use is dominated by Vera with 57% of the market. Climate Action Reserve is in second place with 25%. Household and community is dominated by gold standard with Vera in second place. Industry and commercial is dominated by Vera with 77% of the market share. Renewable energy is offered almost entirely by Vera and gold standard with Vera in first place. Transportation as a sector is insignificant in the carbon markets right now, but that's split evenly between Vera, gold standard, and the American Carbon Registry. And lastly, waste management is majority registered under Vera with 53% market share. You might notice that Gold Standard and Vera actually have similar numbers of projects, even though Vera has significantly more market share by issued credits. That's because the projects Vera's registered tend to issue more credits than Gold Standard, particularly the forestry and land use projects. Now let's dive into how a carbon project is created and tested. That process is called the verification and validation process. Any carbon project starts off with its design. This is written out in a project design document, or PDD. It outlines the project description, emission mitigation activities or requirements, and the benefits the project might provide for the environment. Once a project's initial documentation is ready, they'll create an account with the registry they want to register under. Which registry they choose depends on what type of methodology or region the project is in. Next up is validation. This is the stage of the process where the PDD is assessed to ensure that the project conforms to the requirements of the registry. Validation is not actually done by the registry itself. This is where the project is required to bring in a Validation and Verification Body, or VVB. A VVB is a third-party auditing firm that reviews the project design document that a project developer creates and visits the site of the project as well. Each registry has their own list of approved Validation and Verification Bodies that a developer can hire. If everything looks good, then the project is validated and moves on to the next stage. 
At this point, the project is officially registered under the registry, and then the project can begin to monitor the level of emissions reductions they see at their site. After a certain period of time, this creates a monitoring report. Said report is reviewed again by the verification and validation body. If the reports are consistent with what the registry standard outlines, then the project is verified, which means that the project can officially start issuing carbon credits. To make it a little more confusing, some of the registries call their carbon credits different names. For example, Gold Standard calls them Verified Emissions Reductions, VERs, and VERA calls them Verified Carbon Units, or VCUs. But they're all the same thing, just from different registries. Moving on, in case something were to go wrong at a project, let's say, for example, you know, a portion of a forest gets burned down, but that project was already verified in generating carbon credits, you know, what happens then? Well, registries do try to prepare for a situation like this with a carbon buffer pool. A buffer pool is a stockpile of carbon credits that will get used to replace any credits that may get cancelled in this scenario. Contributions from a project to a buffer pool are taken in a flat fee or on a risk-adjusted basis depending on the registry. This tends to be about 10-20% to of the credits a project generates. So in conclusion here, if you're just starting to learn about the carbon markets, I have a variety of videos on the subject on my channel Green Investing. I would encourage you to check out my introductory playlist on the carbon markets in the description below. Thanks for watching.